my glasses. Good evening and welcome to this exciting event, the Metropolitan Transport Forum election panel held in conjunction with the City of Melton. Woohoo! Yes, <laughs> big cheer from Sophie. Welcome to everyone at home watching on the live stream and in a recorded format. We've got a good crowd here tonight and I'm, I'm really glad that everyone came along. My name is Jonathan Marsden. I'm the chair of the Metropolitan Transport Forum, which is a non-partisan independent group representing the 26 metropolitan councils. And we work to advocate our needs as a collective, as well as sharing information, facilitating forums like this, and sharing that information on, on, on the web. I'd like to first of, first of all acknowledge that Melton City Council acknowledges that the land it now occupies has a history that begins with the indigenous occupants of the Kulin Nation. Council pays its respects to the Kulin Nation people and their elders and descendants past and present. I'd like to add that the MTF is committed to truth-telling and reconciliation with our First Nations people who have travelled through and traded across this country for more than 3,000 generations. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'd, I'd like to acknowledge the councillors present before I introduce our guests. We have with us tonight the Mayor of Melton, Councillor Goran Kesic. And hold your applause to the, to the end. There's lots of very important people here. Um, j j j oh, of course, yes. Yeah. Sophia will get a round of applause anyway. But Joining the Mayor is the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Lara Kali. Welcome. We have Councillor Sophie Ramsey. Hold your applause. <laughs> she, she couldn't help herself. Councillor Ashley Vandenberg. Um, Councillor Moira Deeming who will be joining us shortly and, and we're likely to see Councillor Steve Abushi as well. He's indicated that he's likely to come. I'd also like to welcome uh, a special guest from Wyndham, the Mayor of Wyndham, Councillor Peter Maynard. And of course, uh, Peter is a delegate to the MTF as well. well we're, we're, this uh, event has been facilitated by a number of council staff here and I'll, I'll, I'll call them out individually later. But I'd like to just um, mention that there are a number of other candidates for other seats in the audience, and I'd just like to acknowledge you and, and also thank you for, for putting your hand up to, to run in, in the thriving democracy of, of the city of Melton. There are, there's more than one seat in the city of Melton, and tonight is focused on the seat of Corroyd, but that's not to um, ignore the other seats represented, including the seat of Melton, and I believe the other one is, is Sydenham, which is shared with Brimbank. So I anyone running in those seats or anyone living in those seats or anyone wanting to ask questions about those seats is, is welcome to do so as it falls within the Melton LGA. So what I'm going to do first is not a magic trick, but I have four cards here, the Ace of Hearts, the Two of Hearts, the Three of Hearts and the Four of Hearts, and I'm going to ask the candidates to choose a card. Okay, so I'll ask the candidates to reveal their card now. And who is the ace of hearts? Here we go. So I'll, 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 I'll introduce the candidates in turn and we'll, we'll get into the initial remarks. But before we do that, um, I'd just like to mention a few housekeeping rules before we hear from the Mayor of Melton. We are an accessible forum and we value accessibility. We've had some requests for accommodation so that people with special needs can participate in tonight's meeting. But if anyone needs any assistance in participating tonight, whether it's visual, oral, hearing loop, their position in the room, or would like to ask a question through other means, then please make yourself known to the concierges. We have two concierges helping us with that task tonight. They are Fergus Vile and Georgina Borg. So we have Georgina up the back and she'll be looking out for people as they come in to make sure they're comfortable. And Fergus is 
out the front. So he's, he's, he's head on point and they'll be also managing the microphones later. But it's very important that if you feel your needs haven't been accommodated that, that you can make yourself known to those people. Toilets are around the corner. Uh, you probably saw them as they come in. But, um, and of course, tea and coffee, so help yourself. This is a transport forum, and, and as such, we ask speakers and the audience to focus on transport-related topics. But before we meet the panel, I'd like to start with a short welcome and scene setting from the Mayor of Melton, Councillor Goran Kesic. Womenjika, everyone. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me today at uh, Metropolitan Transfer Forum for Corroids. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional land of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to elders past and present. I would like to acknowledge uh, here tonight my fellow councillors, my deputy, Lara Carley, and also uh, Councillor Sophia Ramsey. Also, my dear friend and the mayor of uh, Wyndham, uh, Peter Maynard, and our panelists for Upper House candidates, Dr. Catherine Cumming, Bernadette Thomas, and candidates for Lower House, uh, State um, Electorate uh, Corroid and Sydney, uh, Luba Gregorovic, and uh, John Fletcher. I would also like to welcome members of our growing and uh, diverse community and acknowledge the strength and the wealth of experience you bring to our uh, great city. Our residents uh, uh, lack access to public transport and uh, great safe roads. Transport has uh, been the number one issue for our residents repeatedly year in year and uh, it's uh, also seen in our annual survey that we run. That's why Council advocates on behalf of our residents for investment in transport. We have a, a current population of 185,000 residents and grow to 500,000 over the next 30 years, which will be a size of national capital. Investment in transport has to happen now to roll out in time for this significant growth. Due to lack of jobs in our area, every morning 73% of our local workforce leave the municipality daily to access employment. Council started a Fix Our Roads campaign just before federal elections and restarted it recently. We are calling uh, on the state and the federal governments to provide a funding to upgrade the Western Highway, uh, duplicate and upgrade a Melton Highway, Duplicate Christie's Road, duplicate and upgrade Hopkins Road, duplicate, uh, duplicate the Robinson Road, Westwood Drive, Calder Park Drive Corridor, and build uh, the Calder Park Interchange. Also, we advocate uh, for electrification of Melton Rail Line, and together with uh, Brimbank, Hobson Bay, Maribyrnong, Mooney Valley, Wyndham, Mayors, uh, I'm preparing a letter for the Premier and uh, Leader of Opposition to meet uh, with us uh, for further discussion in regards east-west metro rail plane, or rather, as my uh, friend, uh, uh, Peter Maynard, uh, Mayor Wyndham, calling west-east metro rail plane. I have to add that uh, we had uh, this morning some encouraging uh, announcements uh, uh, for our municipality from the state government, but details I'll leave our panelists. Uh, I, for one, I look forward to hearing uh, what these candidates and any parties they represent uh, have to say tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Kesic, for that introduction. We move on now to the part of the evening where we ask each panellist to speak for up to six minutes on their perspective on local and metropolitan transport issues. We have a person, Greg Day, the organiser, Timing the speakers, who's renowned for his bell ringing acumen. He will ring a bell when the speaker has one minute remaining. And then two bells when time is up. You only have 60 seconds to go when you hear one bell. And two means you must stop speaking. Thank you. At about 7 p.m., we'll start the Q&A part of the evening. At that time, we'll ask people with a question to raise their hand. I'll invite one person at a time to come uh, to ha ha indicate that they'd like to ask a question. I'll keep a, a list of those people who 
want to ask a question and we'll have our concierge deliver the microphone to you, so you needn't um, leave your place. I'll intersperse that with a number of questions that have been submitted beforehand. In the sign-up process, you, you were given the opportunity to pre-submit some questions, and those pre-submitted questions have been shared with the candidates as well, in which case, to break it up and to ensure um, an even spread of questions, I'll be asking one question from the pre-submitted questions and another one from the audience, and we'll get through as many as we possibly can. To that end, I will um, ask the candidates to answer the questions in less than one minute um, to get through as many as we can. At about 7.45, we'll invite each panellist to make final remarks of up to two minutes. All of this is being live streamed and recorded and will be available from the Metropolitan Transport Forum website in the next day or so. But now, it's time to meet our panel. We're joined by Luba Gregorovich, who's the ALP candidate for Kororoit. Welcome, Luba. Which card did you draw? Number three. Three of hearts. Excellent. Next is Bernadette Thomas, Greens candidate for Western Metro. The four of hearts. Uh, next along is Catherine Cumming, Independent MLC, Western Metropolitan Region. Two. Two of hearts, which must mean that John Fletcher, Liberal candidate for Corroyt, is the ace of hearts and therefore the first speaker. <laughs> I'll, I'll now invite um, John to speak first, followed by Catherine, followed then by Luba, and finally we'll hear from Bernadette. Um, John, you now have six minutes to address the audience and, and, and perhaps if, if you could come up to the lectern for this first part, when we do the questions, we'll remain seated. But I invite you now to address the audience. Thanks, John. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Metro Metropolitan Transport Forum. Melbourne's West is one of the fastest growing electorates in Australia, let alone the Greater Melbourne, with the expected growth to be over 300,000 people by 2050. Yet the infrastructure for roads and public transport continues to be ignored by the current state government. The Andrews government is happy to commit $53 billion with costs increasing daily to build a rail tunnel from Box Hill to Cheltenham there's no proven economic value to Greater Melbourne, yet what has been committed to the West. <coughs> Labor's own major infrastructure program delivery capability report from August 2021 states, no agency fully understands the construction industry and public sector's ability to deliver the government's pipeline. So how will they deliver on the promises they've committed to? Even the announcements they made today, where are the costings? Talk is cheap. Not even a bridge to access the Western Highway inbound from the south to accommodate the growing population around the Cobble Bank area between Leakes Road and Ferris Road, meaning residents need to go backwards to go to, go to Melbourne. Like you all here tonight, I access the roads in the electric daily to conduct my work and social activities. So I endure the frustrations you all endure with poor management and future planning of road infrastructure. These frustrations will only get worse with increased delays on our roads, particularly around peak work hours, school drop-offs and shopping centres. We need a plan and the expenditure allocated now to accommodate the appalling conditions of our roads. That will de deteriorate quickly as traffic increases. As we all know, our own vehicle registration and insurances continue to increase while our road funding continues to decrease. Our, road, our cars must be roadworthy, yet our roads aren't car worthy. Matt Guy has committed to $10 billion over 10 years to improve the road infrastructure in Victoria. And if elected, and this is the years of continual neglect from the current government since 2014. The recent road tragedy of the Deer Park Bypass highlights the need for our, our road ac roads to be assessed and an urgent action taken so that this sort of tragedy doesn't become a common occurrence. Put simply, planning expenditure on upgrades and maintenance is a disgrace in the electorate of Kororoit. 
Public transport is sadly lacking in the outer west compared to the Monash electorate in the east. We have more people living and working in our area, yet we have half the amount of bus routes. Why? The electrification, of the, in addition to the Metro train service through to Melton, was a 2018 election promise by the Andrews government. Yet still no planning or intention has been publicly stated or released in the current campaign. I'm a passionate advocate for the increase in reliable, safe public transport infrastructure for Corroyte, as I see this is a major issue. If we continue to vote Labor, we'll continue to be denied funding for major road and public transport, as Labor have proven during the current successive terms in government. We deserve better, you deserve better. 2022 is time to be heard and collectively we have the power to enforce change for the better. Don't let the West remain in neglect. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'd like to invite Dr Catherine Cumming, the independent MLC for Western Metro Region, to address the audience. So hello everyone, um, my name's Dr Catherine Cumming, I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine and I was elected in 2018 as, as an independent in the upper house here at Western Metropolitan Region. I spent 21 years in local government and Maribyrnong City Council and then within those 21 years I was mayor there twice which gave me the opportunity to actually work with Melton City Council, Bringbank City Council, Hobsons Bay, Mooney Valley, and all of the, the councils in metropolitan, Western Metropolitan Region. Uh, since being in Parliament as an independent... Okay, everybody leave. Is that <laughs> true? Um, uh, yeah, maybe we should just check. Up. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, there has been bomb threats recently in Parliament, so just, just a bit nervous at times. Um, so since being in Parliament, um, I have worked very closely with all the councils of the West uh, to advocate for all the road infrastructure that is needed in the West. Um, myself, I am a parent of five children. I've grown up here in the West. I ha I've lived, uh, worked and played here in the West. And for myself, um, I, have a, I go through all these roads all the time to take my children to sport, uh, football, soccer, uh, you name it. I have driven around the Western suburbs as mummy taxi. So I get to experience the actual uh, congestion, the poor infrastructure. I go through the potholes. I sit in uh, traffic for uh, hours on end just to get from one side of um, the city or, or this western metropolitan region to the other. Tonight, I actually came here an hour early. I have three staff members. My office is in Seddon. One of my staff members lives here in Burnley. Another one lives in Bacchus Marsh. And there have been many a time that they have not been able to get to the electoral office in Seddon due to issues on Ballarat Road um, and the congestion in this particular area. I thought I'd bring you maybe just some of the copies of all the letters, oh, sorry, all the times I've actually contributed in Parliament in the way of questions to the ministers, um, actions that I seek, constituency questions, and the responses that they've actually given me. You can go and check on Hansard if you wish. They're all there for you to see. But I understand that not, not everyone here has access to the internet, nor has access, or, or actually wants to go through Hansard to see everything that I've actually brought up on your behalf. But they're here. And some of these ministers' responses, uh, you should be shocked at the dismissive nature of this government. And the times that I've brought up, what the issues are for the West, and how I've been mocked in that chamber. But I must say, the wonderful things that I've brought up uh, in Parliament on my constituents' behalf, on the Mayor's behalf, on the Councillor's behalf here in the West, I've actually got some wins. And I want to thank Monica from Melton, if she's here in this room today, or if you're online, 
um, I want to tell you that this state government's announcement, the Premier today uh, removing three level crossings in Melton is because of that letter you sent to me and that I brought up in June this year. I want to thank you. Because, yeah, thank Monica from Melton, whoever you are. Because um, not only here in Melton have I brought up the issues of level crossings in the West that have been ignored, <coughs> such as Yarraville level crossing, Spotswood level crossing, the level crossings in Essendon and Mooney Ponds that have been ignored, we get only a small handful of the level crossings removed here in the West. The priority was in the East. Yarraville is a great example. When I was on that council, people were killed walking across there. The garbage truck was hit there. It was meant to be part of the 75 level crossings, the first 75, and still has not been done. But in this immediate area, I can show you that I've actually requested the upgrade of the Western Highway, uh, including the interchange in Bormans Road, the duplication of the upgrade of the Mountain Highway, I've asked for the duplication and the upgrade of Hopkins Road, the duplication of Christie's Road. I've also requested the uh, duplication of Robinson's Road, Westwood Drive, Calder Park <laughs> Drive, Calder Park Interchange, I've brought up residents' concerns around just all in this immediate area from Ferris Road. I'll, I'll, go in, I'll go into some of them. So Calder Park, the Buller Pie Pass, um, the Sunbury Buller duplication. I've also brought up uh, Caroline Springs Boulevard, Taylor's Roads, uh, Sinclair's Road. I've also requested, like I was just saying about the upgrades, let alone the duplication of Ballarat Road and right along that corridor, uh, also requesting that um, in and around schools that they are 40 k flashing lights. You will go down Ballarat Road in front of the special school in Braybrook <coughs> and it is 70 kilometres here in the west. You go past St Monica's in Footscray and it is uh, 60 kilometres. <coughs> we get ignored here in the West when it comes to even our children's safety. I've requested the uh, duplication of under, under Ashley Street and the Tottenham Rail Pass. Is that a finish? That's oh, is that a finish? <laughs> I thought I was getting extra time due to the um, thing. But I've also, I'll just, I'll, I'll finish it up by actually saying that I've also brought up the brush routes, um, the bus uh, interchange, looking for uh, making sure that we have more frequent buses in this immediate area. More train stations, uh, Paisley Street and Altona North, Leaks Road. But seeing that I'm getting the bell, um, I want to actually thank you all for actually um, being the independent representative in the Upper House on your behalf. Uh, it has been a pleasure bringing up all of your concerns and getting promises and sometimes money from the government. Thank you, Dr Cumming. We'll have more of an opportunity later with Q&A to, to address the audience, so there'll be plenty of time. Um, our next speaker is Luba Gogorovic, the ALP candidate for Corroy. Luba, I'd like to... I'd like to invite you to address the audience. Thank you very much for the warm introduction and also hi to everybody. It's great to see so many uh, mayors and councillors here as well and also former members of parliament. Great to see you all. I'd like to begin by, of course, acknowledging the traditional owners and pay my respects to elders both past, present and emerging. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Luba Grigorovic and I'm the candidate for Core Right. I look forward to the election, which is obviously November 26, and I think we'll all soon have... Uh, voting fatigue and uh, election fatigue because I think it's all everyone will be talking about in the next few weeks. But for tonight, it's all about public transport and that's why I'm here and really happy to be. So thank you to Greg and the team for the kind uh, invitation to come along and speak tonight. So I'm very lucky that I got, I picked the number three ticket because I had just seen that there might have been a little bit of angst against the Labor government and that potentially some of my... Um, Companions on the panel may say that Labor has done nothing. 
So I'm not going to stand up here and profess to know everything about public transport. The truth is I don't, and I'm sure many of you in the audience know a lot more than I do or probably ever will. But I have done a ton of research to try and actually understand exactly what has been accomplished and to look at what is needed. And of course, a lot is always needed. And with a growing population, no one's going to deny that. So I thought I'd give a bit of an overview of what the Andrews government is and has been doing over the time whilst in power. The government is spending over $20 billion on rail and road projects in the West. The Metro Tunnel might be in the city, but the benefits are felt here in the West. 60% more trains on the Sunbury Line. The tunnel also frees up the city loop to allow for more trains on the Werribee Line. Melton Line users will be able to transfer to Metro Tunnel trains at Sunshine, which will cut around 10 minutes off a trip to places like Melbourne CBD. Just today, and Mayor Gorin alluded to this before, there was an announcement. The Andrews Labor government announced that a further four level crossings would be removed in the Outer West. I'm really pleased to say that three of them are in Melton and one in the electorate of Corroyte. These four level crossings will join two already removed along the Melton Corridor at Fitzgerald Road in Ardea and Robinson's Road in Deer Park. And a third removal currently underway at Mount Derrimut Road, delivering smoother connections and creating thousands of local jobs. Melbourne Airport Rail, this is a project for the whole state, but the winners are here in the West. An extra station at Keelor East, more trains into the city from Sunshine, and not only will the new line take passengers from the CBD to the airport in around 30 minutes, it will also run through Sunshine Station and the Metro Tunnel, maximising connections to Melbourne's west and southeast and Victoria's major regional centres of Ballarat, Bendigo, Geelong and Gippsland. Then there's the Geelong Fast Rail. This will benefit the whole corridor through the west, not just Geelong. Running Geelong services on the Werribee Corridor also frees up room for more trains to Melbourne's west, including Wyndham, Melton, Ballarat and Bendigo that run on into the, sun, the Sunshine Corridor. The completed Ballarat line upgrade, which is giving us 200 extra weekly services to stations in Corroyte. The level crossings, so Deer Park, Sunbury, Werribee, and as I mentioned before, the four announced today being Coburn's Road, Exford Road and Ferris Road in Melton, and of course Hopkins Road in Truganina. And then there's the Westgate Tunnel. We're delivering the Westgate Tunnel project, which will provide another access point to the city for people going in from the west and reduce congestion for the 200,000 people who use the Westgate Freeway every day. We all know that if something goes wrong on the Westgate Bridge, it creates absolute havoc here in the west. And it's why all across the West needs an alternative, and that's why what the Westgate Tunnel will deliver. The Western Roads upgrade. We've invested billions of dollars in roads in Melbourne's West and roads that benefit Melbourne's West. Federal Labor, however, has committed 10 million to a business case, and I should say that was championed by the candidate Sam Ray, to develop upgrades between Melton and Caroline Springs, and that's the next step to determine the best path forward. Because you can't just get out there with a pickaxe and a grader, you need to do the important design work to make sure that things happen. Lastly, there was today's announcement of investment of up to $650 million to deliver better train services into the West, including Caroline Springs, with extra stabling and upgrading, upgraded stations to deliver nine car velocity trains for the Melton Line. If I'm elected the member for Corroyte, I will advocate for improved improvements in public transport in the West. I am aware that there's still more to be done and there always will be. Trains and buses help enable people achieve their dreams. There are huge cost of living benefits in safe fuel and access to better jobs when public transport is at people's fingertips. And I don't think anyone in this room will deny that. Thank you. Thank you, Luba. The next speaker, the final speaker in this initial period is Bernadette Thomas, the Greens candidate for the Western Metropolitan Region.
Thanks, Jonathan, for that introduction. And um, like Luba, it's so great to see everyone here and uh, to see so many familiar faces as well. Um, I acknowledge the people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the country on which we meet, and I extend my respects to Elders past and present and any First Nations people with us today. I use public transport on a daily basis, and tonight I did what I would usually do. I looked up the PTV app, I went to the bus stop, and uh, the bus didn't come. So I intended to catch a bus and a train and a bus to get here an hour, an, an hour's worth of public transport travel, which is 24 k's, but would normally take about 30 minutes in a car. So I had to make a rescue call to a friend to get here. Um, so I'm just, uh, I guess I just want to let you know that I understand uh, the difficulties, even though I live in the inner west, um, the difficulties with public transport extend right from the inner to the outer west from Sunbury um, and beyond. But I'd like to start by sharing some stories from some Western Suburbs residents who were recently interviewed by The Age and the ABC. Saki Asawit takes the train from Tarnit Station, which opened in 2015, 23 kilometres from the city to her Swanston Street office a few times a week. But infrequent V-line services meant she sometimes resorted to an $80 Uber ride. Sometimes there are only three carriages instead of six, so we're squishing in and some people cannot get in, she said while waiting 20 minutes for her rush hour train on Friday morning. The population is growing faster than the services here. We need more frequent trains. The second one is from Iqbal Hussain, who is actually here. So Iqbal, you can put your hand up. Um, so Iqbal says, there's a bus stop right next to his home in Hoppers Crossing, but he rarely uses it. Most of the time, if anyone needs the bus, they have to wait 40 to 50 minutes, he said. If he does catch the bus four kilometres to the train station, it takes four times longer than if he were to drive. The trip is five minutes by, back, by car or 20 minutes on the bus. It goes around and around all the little streets before it gets to the station. And then I often miss the connecting train, he said. That's why most people in the outer west avoid the bus system if they need to get somewhere on time. In my recent meetings with mayors and CEOs across the West, the most talked about issue was public transport and the lack of options for residents moving around or travelling in and out of their suburbs. We talked about a lack of investment in public and active transport and switching to electric vehicles and cleaner technologies. We talked about a public transport system that's not working for residents. We talked about our congested roads and residents spending hours each day sitting in traffic. We talked about transport infrastructure not keeping up with the pace of population growth and the lack of choice to switch to cleaner, cheaper, climate-friendly forms of transport. So the Greens have a plan for climate-friendly transport across rail, bus, active transport and electric, electric vehicles, and I'll outline some of those now. Our rail networks are at capacity. We have people living in highly urbanised suburbs in the West forced to catch a V-line train to the city and new or not so new suburbs without train stations. So the Greens' plan includes support for Melbourne Metro 2 for electrifying the line to Melton and a rail connection to the airport, projects which we have been advocating for over many years. It includes government investment in rail transport infrastructure that will increase connectivity and accessibility in the West. The West East Metro Rail Plan proposed uh, and developed by Rail Futures and our plan for more public transport more often will see fast-tracked planning of new tunnels and tracks to allow for increased services across the existing network, an integrated clean transport plan for Victoria, a massive increase in services for metropolitan trains and trams where they run every five to ten minutes from 7am to 7pm, seven days a week, and early morning and late night services running every ten minutes all week. Our bus networks are underutilised and we have whole suburbs without access to buses. These networks can be reconfigured to improve service and frequency within existing resources. And we need to expand the network so that more communities can access fast, reliable and connected public transport. So the Greens plan includes a commitment to manufacturing 3,000 electric buses to create a network of high frequency bus routes across the suburbs powered by renewable energy. We would like to plan new routes and increase services on routes determined by the clean transport plan and based on community need. And we want to upgrade and build new bus depots to power electric buses with solar energy. We also recognise and support the work of the Friends of the Earth Better Buses for the West campaign. More than two thirds of people in Victoria want to walk and ride their bikes more, but without safe bike lanes, walking paths and crossings, people don't always have the option. And that's true in the West where these can be the last items built in new suburbs and where our existing suburbs are not being retrofitted despite advocacy from the community. 
We know that walking and bike riding has enormous positive mental and physical health, social, environmental and economic benefits. And we need investment by government to make riding and walking safer and more accessible. And we need them to take these forms of active transport seriously. So Greens are committed to increasing investment into separated protected bike lanes across the suburbs and providing an eco bonus to help make the purchase of an e-bike a little easier. People shouldn't have to wait years, sometimes decades, for public and act active transport to be built. It should be delivered as part of an integrated land use planning process and built and ready to use when people move in. We know that when people of the West have options, they'll use public and active transport and the Greens plans this election will help make it easier for residents to switch to cleaner, cheaper, less polluting forms of transport. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Bernadette, and thank you to all of our speakers. It's now time for the Q&A segment. Um, I, I just want to emphasise that it's a Q&A segment. It's, it's not a town hall meeting, so this is an opportunity to hear about the policies and promises from the election candidates. So I'd ask that you quickly get to your question and not make speeches or, or long preambles. We, we really want to hear what these people have to say and, and what they're thinking. Um, as I said before, I'm going to go between the pre-submitted questions and questions from the audience. But um, a lot of these questions came from the suburb of Mount Atkinson. Mm. Um, and so what, what I'd like to do is ask if anyone here is from Mount Atkinson would like to ask a question. Okay, so I, I, I have the, the one there and be, be, perhaps if we could give you a microphone. Or Here we go. Um, and please keep your questions brief, and I'll ask the, the panellists to remain where, where they are and answer in less than one minute so we can get through as many as possible. And I ask you um, to ask your question now. Hi, everyone. Okay, I just want to ask that uh, uh, I live in Mount Ginson, and uh, they, most of the people living there, but they have no public transport there. We need only buses, especially bus, because we, I can understand we don't need the train. There are a lot of budget you need, so we need uh, at least public <coughs> transport and some type of food, uh, just like we don't ask for the coals or something like that, but any center from where we can buy, our, um, fulfill our needs. This is the basic needs, the human needs. This, there is no school. Only Rock Bank Primary School is in our zone. So the main problem is the school, the public transport, and the, um, I am in the group of uh, 100 people, and they are suffering from public transport. They really need the transport and the stores there. And uh, the, the question you'd like to put to the candidates <laughs> is? Yeah, I, they just want to know that when they will think about that. Thank you so much. All right, so I, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll start at that end, move forward, and then when the next question comes, we'll start with, it, with the next person along and so forth. So perhaps if I can start with you, Benedict. I, I believe so. We, ha we haven't actually... Oh, down or up. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, thank you for the question. Um, I guess I'll sort of refer back a bit to what I said earlier around, um, you know, needing integrated uh, land use planning and uh, ha having public transport, whether it's a bus or a train or a tram, as part of that and delivered early is really what we need. And unfortunately, it hasn't happened in Mount Atkinson, but we know that there is, um, we can reconfigure bus services to make them uh, available to communities like yours within the existing that's probably what we should do as a first step. Um, but the Greens are committed to, um, you know, implementing more buses um, in areas where they don't exist. And under our clean transport plan, we would be asking communities to tell us exactly where they're needed. And it sounds like they're needed in Mount Atkinson. So. Thank you. Um, Luba. Thank you. Oh, yep, yeah, got me. Um, thanks very much for your question. I've just made a few notes. So uh, obviously in relation to the level crossing, that announcement was made today and will be one that will be gone, which is I think really positive. Um, in relation to the planning portfolio question, I believe that that is more of a planning question and 
obviously a lot more does need to be done in Mount Atkinson, that's the reality of it. And with relation to the bus um, concerns that you raised, and I know that there are many, I know that the Minister has got Victoria's bus plan. Uh, I, I think the best thing to do would be to have a look at that and I'd be more than happy to do that on your behalf and speak to the Minister personally and get back to you with some answers. So I'll give you um, a card at the end of this. I've got a campaign office down at Derriman, uh, sorry, not Derriman, down at Deer Park Shopping Centre and I'd be more than happy to meet with you. Thank you. John. Yes, thank you for your question. Um, Transport, public transport is a major issue everywhere in the West. Um, as I stated in my, my statement, we, we've got more people living here than the Monash electric, yet we've got half the bus routes. It's, a, it's something that I'll be advocating strongly for, uh, working closely with, uh, with the ministers involved, as well as the council, to get the right resolve there. Uh, as far as the uh, schools and, and shopping centres go, again, that's something that needs to be looked at in a, in a planning perspective and costed effectively. And once that's done, we can then move forward. But until that's such time, that's uh, something we need to, to uh, look at planning-wise. Thanks, John. Catherine. Uh, thank you. Uh, this has been raised, your, your questions have been raised numerous times by numerous constituents uh, to myself, which I've raised in Parliament. Uh, some of the government's responses to me on, on behalf of the constituents, the, the concerns that you have raised, uh, things like, um, I've been, it says here from the Minister, I encourage the member to learn more and provide her feedback uh, and go on to the engaged.vic.gov.au uh, website. So in other words, rather than committing, this government has never committed and put money into the budget. Um, I have raised that. Um, every budget that I've seen that this government has uh, put before me, that there isn't any money here in the West for the projects that the community want. Uh, and it would seem that there is always lacking. So it's also the, the other responses from the government that I always receive are, we'll look into it, uh, we're going to do a business case. Thanks, Catherine. I feel like I'm in Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Gre Greg will ding you. He's a very effective bell ringer. Um, we, we, we have a question uh, over here. Go ahead. Hi, thanks very much. My name's Leanne and I have just moved into the Millstone Estate, not far from Mount Atkinson. Um, I'd just like to know who um, is responsible for the flexi-ride bus system, which nobody really knows about, and wouldn't that be just a very easy solution to go via Mount Atkinson? Because it's very un, like, underutilised they're the little tiny buses, if everybody's seen them. They're, it is a specific app. And the only way I found out about it was through our little community group chat. So who's responsible for those bus routes or that particular system? Is that our council or is it government? And Thank if you. so, why can't you fix it? It's, <laughs> if you've got something there and it's underutilised, just let it go a little bit further. Thank you for the question. Um, so I'll start with you, Liver. Thank you for the question. Uh, I can't say one or the other who is actually in, in charge of Flexi, um, but what I can say is I was at Deanside Lifestyle Retirement Village a little while ago and they mentioned uh, the exact same thing, the, the bus routes and the fact that they're just not there. So it's something that is definitely on my agenda. Uh, I have raised it with Melton City Council, both the Mayor and the CEO, and it's something that does need to be addressed. And again, if elected, I'd be more than happy to advocate on behalf of all residents, because I think, you know, public transport's crucial and we can do more with our buses. Thanks, Luba. John. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know who's responsible, whether it's council, whether it's uh, the, the local minister or the state, the state government. There you go. I stand correct. State government. The state government's been in power. The, the state government's been in power for eight years and done nothing in the West regarding upgrading public transport. If successful, I will advocate for for an upgrade in public transport. But for the, the current government has has a record of ignoring the West as far as public transport goes and, and road infrastructure. But I will advocate if successful for upgrading in, in public transport. Thanks, John. Catherine. 
As you've heard, it is state government um, to actually try to increase the frequency, um, the quality of the buses and the trains and the trams in the western suburbs, as well as the bus stops uh, for infrastructure, uh, for you actually to sit there and wait. Um, it is always a, um, a dog's breakfast. Some bus stops do not obviously have any shelter. Um, some are you could be sitting there for ages waiting for a bus and it doesn't arrive. You do not know what's going on. Um, it is nice to hear that this state government is finally going to go down the route of actually looking for some smaller buses um, as well as some greener buses or more environmentally friendly buses. But they have not committed to more frequency. They have not uh, committed uh, to more buses, better routes in the west. I have brought it up from Werribee, Bunbury and here. So I feel like I'm in Parliament. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Bernadette. Thanks for your question. Um, providing public transport, including buses, is the responsibility of the state government. So we need to kind of go back to the state, I guess, to ask uh, the question about why that service is not uh, working for you and other residents. Um, but there's been a lot of work done at, by Dr John Stone at uh, Melbourne Uni, I think, and through the Better Buses for the West campaign, um, showing that with our current sort of resources dedicated to buses, we can expand sort of exponentially the services right across the West. So that's the kind of work that needs to be done to say, why isn't that working for you in your area? And what do we need to do to so that you can catch a bus. Thank you, Bernadette. And I'll, I'll go now to a pre-submitted question. So I've, I've, I've got a couple of uh, questioners lined up, so um, no need to raise your hands for, for a few minutes yet. Um, and I'll go to those people in turn. I'm trying to maintain a, um, a balance of genders and um, ages and diff different parts of the room as well. So I'll go to those questioners when the time comes. But one of the questions that was submitted before the event was, um, reads as follows, the Western Ring Road is already at capacity with over 150,000 vehicles a day. What is your position on the outer metropolitan ring as it provides both a rail and road alternative to connecting the outer west? And I'm, I'm going to go now and start, start with John and then Catherine Bernadette, <coughs> finishing with Luba. John. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a sensational idea. Not only will it improve uh, mobility as far as uh, transport goes, but it'll also create jobs in the area. So it's a win-win for the area. So I, I'm a big advocate for it. Um, I don't see a drawback for this plan. Uh, the fact that it will increase uh, jobs and make it easy to get around, I don't see a downside. So I will be an advocate for this, this project. Thanks, John. Catherine? I support this project, but we also have to look at all the priorities of all the intersections and all the roads and the duplication that needs to occur, that has not occurred over the last 20 or 30 years. We have all, this is a Malways, it has all the Vic Roads plans. Each state government comes in and actually ignores the 10 year Vic, uh, Vic Roads plans. It ignores the, the council's 10 year plans the intermodal plans of all the uh, councils in the West. Uh, it would be great that they actually prioritise what needs to be done now in the way of congestion and duplication um, so that we can move around for our businesses, but also so people can actually go to a hospital, emergency services can actually move around. We have. We have ambulance that don't get anywhere on time. We have fire trucks that don't get to fires on time. We have uh, police cars that don't get to domestic violence victims on time. Thanks, Catherine. Next is Bernadette. Transport emissions are the fastest growing set of emissions um, at the moment. And I think when we're thinking about roads and widening roads or building new roads, I think we need to think a little more broadly about transport as a whole and integrating um, you know, road transport and public transport. Um, because what we do need to do is give people choice. Um, if our roads are already congested, we know that if we build a new road, it will become congested sort of within two years of 
are being built. So I think we've got to think broadly. I know that the, the OMR uh, is going to also have um, freight on rail. Wouldn't it be great if the proposal also had passenger on rail so that it did move people from down here all the way up to Epping? Thanks. Thanks, Bernadette. Luba? Thanks very much. Uh, look, from a Labor perspective, we've upgraded the Western Ring Road to increase capacity. We always plan for future growth, but we have to be realistic about the roads that link the communities right now. Labor has invested millions of dollars upgrading the M80 Ring Road across the north and west, adding lanes to reduce travel times and ease congestion so that people can get where they need to go. Again, I think that there needs to be more looked into this suggestion. Thank you. And that brings us back to the beginning. No? Yes. Um, so th th that, that was a pre-submitted question and an excellent one. And now I'm going to go to th the man with, with the vest. Go ahead, ask your question now, sir. Uh, my name is Iqbal Hussain. Uh, we know uh, Victoria has a uh, bus plan. And, uh, my question, I have got a couple of area of discussion. Number one, we haven't heard any budget regarding the Victorian bus plan. Now, when it is going to be implemented, uh, if it is implementing, then uh, is Western suburb will be get prioritized. Uh, if you are elected, uh, how you are going to put guarantee that it is happening? Good Thank you. So the, 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 the question was, um, when will the budget for the bus plan? Yes. <coughs> Say again? Yes. Yeah. When, when, when will the bus plan be funded? And we'll, we'll start with Catherine. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I'm obviously an independent and I've set up my independence party because I believe that people here in the West actually need to give independence a go at this next election um, so they actually can represent your local needs, understand your local wants because they drive on your local roads and understand your local needs. Uh, I, um, so I want the community to actually give an independent a go um, and so that you actually get the priorities, the commitments for your local area. Otherwise, you will continue on the Labor Party neglect of the West. Bernadette. Uh, thanks, Iqbal. Um, I mean, the Greens are always supportive of more buses more often in more places. Um, so, as I said earlier, we've committed to funding 3,000 new uh, bus routes across Melbourne and regional areas. Um, and in implementing that, looking where the needs are the greatest, and we know from what we've all kind of talked about tonight that the needs are pretty great in the West. Um, so we'll be looking to, you know, fill some of those gaps through those, the 3,000 new bus routes. Thank you, Bernadette. Luba. So I can't give you any guarantees as to when something will or will not be delivered. I'm simply a candidate today, but hopefully if I am elected as your local member, I'll give you a guarantee that I'll absolutely advocate to ensure that we get improved services here in Colroy. Because at the end of the day, we all know that safe and reliable public transport is of the essence, so we need it. Thank you, Luba. John. Uh, I also, as a candidate, can't guarantee anything. Um, what needs to be done is, in future, when planning for new estates, these sorts of issues need to be foremost in the planning process, so that we have those transport issues solved once the houses start going up. There's no point closing the gate after the horse has bolted. Let's make the planning process part of the transport as well, and that way we don't have these issues. That's what I'll advocate for if it's successful. Yeah. Thank you, John. We'll move to the ne next question. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to a man on that side, and then I'm looking for a woman on this side. Um, yep. Would you, and, and, and then we'll go back to you. But yes, if you'll share the microphone. So, so, sorry, could you speak into the microphone because it's live streaming? So, no, it's uh, to ensure people at home can see you. So, oh, yeah, thanks for tonight uh, to present the information you have to the group today. Um, I'll be honest, this is my first session listening to the government side of uh, what you do and what you don't do. I'll be honest, I'm a bit underwhelmed. Underwhelmed. 
what I'm what I'm lacking to see here today. I was expecting to see a uh, presentation on what you're committing to. Sir, um, with the plan. I'd, I'd ask no, you. To, I'd, no, no, it's not not a sign for speech making or, or quibbling with the format. Well, you let other people go for about three minutes. All I want is one one minute, and I'll yeah, be finished. Uh, just ask your question if, if you well, can. I am, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All I'm asking for in this group here is. What, I'm expecting to see a presentation with a detailed plan of what you're going to do if you are elected over the next 10 years. So yeah. when, when that, will that's, we get that? That's not the format. Um, so I'll just ask you to ask a question of the well, panelists. I'm asking for a detailed plan, sir. Uh, but they can't deliver it. They've got one minute to answer your question, so I'd ask you to get to the question. Okay, so, okay, so the direct question is, yes. when will we see a direct plan for the transport point of view for this region? Thank you. Is that with Bernadette? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the Greens are proposing for a clean transport plan for the whole of Victoria so that we can actually do what basically what you've said, map out what's needed, um, ask the community where, where the needs are, where are the gaps in particularly public transport, in buses, trains, tram services, uh, so that we can plan and resource that plan over a period of time. Uh, we've committed, you know, as part of our ele election platform to 3,000 new bus routes across Melbourne and regional uh, some regional areas in Victoria, um, and we've committed to, you know, we, we want to um, commit to looking at uh, upgrading active transport, so including bike lanes and walking train, walking walking paths. So, when you that? well, we're not. I'm not in Parliament yet, so it's you'll probably hear the same from all of us. Where none of us are the local member. I'm not in government, but we've we've got that plan. So when we're in, when we've got people in Parliament, government. the people who are in Parliament will be advocating for those those plans. Thanks, Bernadette. Luba. Thank you. Uh, so the Labor Party's got a number of plans in place, as I alluded to before. The Bus Victoria plan is one of them. Uh, there's also announcements that are being made every day. Similarly, I, I mentioned earlier the announcement today about the level crossing removal and the other announcement. So each day we will be rolling out announcements between now and November 26, and that will be our plan. Thank you, Luba. John? Again, I'm, I'm not in Parliament, I'm only a candidate, so I can't give you a guarantee as to when a, a plan will come in place. All I can promise you is that I'll advocate for that one. If elected, I will pressure, or pressure, I will lobby the, the minister, the relevant minister, to get things moving, because we need it here in the West. People have been neglected for far too long. This government has neglected the West for far too long. It, we need answers and we need action. Thank you, John. Catherine. There is an inter-Westal um, modal uh, plan in place. Each council actually has a plan for their area that they advocate to the treasurer, which is Tim Pallas, to their local members, um, and, and actively they actually advocate on your behalf. I have raised every single council in the West as priority for the last four years. This government knows what the plans what the plans are for the West, what the priorities are for the for the constituents of the West, uh, but they choose to ignore them, and they choose to cherry pick their favourite projects when people kick up a fuss. But I can assure you, whatever gets spent here in the West, it's double if not triple in the East, and regional Victoria gets ignored even worse. Western suburbs and regional Victoria are probably on par of pathetic roads, intersections and congestion. Thank you. And the, the next question comes from Councillor Ramsey. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Um, we're here for Corroy and Melton in general. So my question is going to be fairly blunt ladies and gentlemen. Um, youth unemployment, 17%. They can't get buses to the, to the employment precincts. It's a damning um, insight on what's happening in our municipality as a whole. I need to know from you, you all, I've heard the spiels. I agree, I, I have the highest regard for each and every one of you. But what do you want to deliver to Corroy and Melton if elected? And what is your party going to do? Because up until today, we've had 0% for our roads. So Melton as a whole wants a commitment. 
Thanks, Sophie. Um, we'll go to Luba. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I actually think you're incorrect with that. My understanding is that $36 million has been allocated to the Melton Roads in the, since the Andrews government. Um, now, again, we should fact check that, but that's just from a lot of the reading that I've done this week. So I do think... I do, well, I'm just saying straight out, my understanding is 36 million. But onto your question, what will I be doing? Categorically, I will be making sure that I advocate day in, day out for our con constituency and for the members of our electorate. And that's the guarantee that you've got from me. I will work tirelessly. I'm incredibly grassroots, and you know that yourself from my time on Hobson Bay City Council. Thanks, Luba. John? Common theme here. The state government has neglected the West for far too long. We're not getting enough spending in this area. I, I will be a strong voice, I will be a strong advocate for this area to get what we need to make things right with our roads and our transport network. Thanks, John. Catherine. Uh, <clears throat> you spoke about youth and the need for them to have jobs in the area. <clears throat> and, I, and we have spoken numerous times, Sophie, about this that the importance of actually having the Melton Hospital built here, making sure that there is a TAFE or some educational facility next door, making sure that the announcement today is actually kept in the way of those three level crossings being removed in Melton so that you can get access to a hospital and hopefully a TAFE in the future. The amount of infrastructure projects that are needed here in Melton um, for our children so they are not roaming the streets, so they've actually got a job. Uh, is plentiful and, and there are so many that I could just keep going on about all the community infrastructure that is needed in this area from swimming pools to you need positive um, spaces for our youth um, so that they can actually continue on um, and so yeah Mel Melton the youth of Melton always have to go for about an hour to get any services no mental health facilities I could just go on and on that the poor kids in this immediate area, how far they have to go to get anything. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, Benedict, your turn. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to interject. Someone with the vehicle registration ANW577 has left their, left their lights on, so... Oh, there we go. public transport Bernadette, over to you. Um, thanks, Sophie. When I came out to Melton to have a chat with your CEO, uh, we talked about the tens of thousands of jobs that council is hoping to attract to the numerous sort of business and industrial areas uh, in Melton. But we also discussed that the, the failing of that is that people in Melton can't actually get to the jobs, particularly young people, because if they can't afford a car, um, they'll have to get to the bus, but there's not enough buses. So I kind of go back to our thing, we think buses in this area are really important. They're super integral to uh, youth, not just youth unemployment um, improving and increasing, but uh, employment across the board for everybody to get, not just to work, but to school, to study, to the shops, etc. Thanks, Bernadette. Um, the next question comes from the woman in grey. Uh, yeah, was it, well, who, who, whoever among you here. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Huh? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Matt from Thornhill Park, one of the most isolated communities in Victoria. Uh, my question is for all the candidates in the room. And I'm glad that you mentioned planning, John. If elected, will all the candidates commit to changing the planning laws in Victoria, allowing councils to hold developers to complete the roads required? Yeah. Thank you for your question. So in this case, we'll start with John. Holding developers accountable uh, is, should be a high priority. Um, as, as I stated before, including uh, look, including uh, making transport part of the uh, planning uh, process to make sure that we get the appropriate public transport required for new, develop, new, new uh, uh, developments. Um, I, will, I will advocate for it. I can't promise you anything because I'm only a candidate, but I will advocate that we make them accountable. <coughs> Thanks, John. Catherine. Absolutely. I, I have advocated for it in Parliament already um, that uh, we have far too many commitments, uh, empty commitments from developers 
that they sell you a brochure. There's meant to be a primary school there. There's meant to be a park here. Um, and there's meant to be intersections and traffic lights. And one, once the development starts, they just seem to walk away. Um, the councils can only do so much. But the state government should step in, in the way of planning controls, and force these developers not to have all of these residents that move into a particular area. There's empty promises. There's no shopping centres that they were promised. Um, there's no access. There's no bus routes. You name it. That, but on those shiny brochures, there's a bus, there's a shopping centre, there's a childcare centre, and they don't appear. Thanks, Catherine. Bernadette. Thanks for your question. The Greens in Parliament are on the record for calling for an overhaul of the planning framework and the legislation covering a whole lot of things, but you know, including things like making sure that developers are held to account for providing that infrastructure. So we'll continue, the, the, the people who are already in Parliament and hopefully they'll be returned with others, uh, you know, will continue to push for changes to the planning laws because it doesn't work for so many uh, communities existing, but particularly for new communities who are continually waiting for decades for services promised. Thank you, Bernadette. And finally, Luba. Thanks very much for your question. I completely agree. Holding developers to account is an absolutely huge priority and something that needs to be done. I'm sick and tired of speaking to residents from around Coral Road who have been sold you know, sold one thing and it not being delivered. So it's something that, if elected, I will definitely be speaking to colleagues about. I can give you her colleague's answer. Thank you. All right, um, we've, we've got a question from this side now. Oh, yeah, and we'll, we'll come to you um, in, in a second. Sorry, I, I didn't know you wanted to ask a question before now, so I'll, I'll come to you in, in, a, in, a, in a while. We've had a number of men in, in a row, but I'm, I'm going to go with the man in the, in the red. Yep. Sorry, we're with, with the red flyer, holding it up. Yeah, and, and then I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a, a woman or a, someone who's not a man on that, that side, up at the back. We haven't had any questions from that quadrant. Thanks and very much, Councillor Marsden. Uh, yeah, no, I'll Hugh, come to you. Yep. My name is Hugh McKenzie. I'm a town planner. I can ask, answer some of your questions there in relation to the resi developers. I don't do a whole lot of resi development, but often they put a whole lot of money into a pot, and then uh, once that pot sort of gets filled, then the infrastructure is delivered. So sometimes a developer will come along, put some money in, but there isn't enough to deliver the rest of the projects. The, the question though, that I want to ask you guys was more of a yes or, or no question. Um, it, it's around uh, the employment precincts and opportunities to unlock jobs. Um, this flyer here talks about um, more than 73% of the, the workforce in the Melton municipality having to leave Melton to get a job. So the opportunity is actually not to make them leave, it's to bring the jobs closer to here. That way you reduce the traffic. Um, I, I know of a number of sort of major institutional uh, development groups that would happily work with uh, council and, and the and state government to um, fund upgrades to road networks. So my question is a yes or no. You know, would you like to work with? Uh, would you like to work with some of those groups that would like to help you deliver the infrastructure? We're not asking for you to deliver it. We're looking to partner with you to deliver it. So that, that's easy. It should be. Quick, yes or no? Yes or no. Um, starting with, I think we're, we're up to John, is that right? No. no. Uh, Catherine, sorry. Yes. Bernadette. Well, without knowing who those groups are, I'll say yes. <laughs> I will absolutely work with anyone who wants to work with me if they've got the betterment of their community in their front of their mind. And John. 100% yes. Uh, it, it's a win for the, for the whole um, electorate. You got four for four. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll now go to the gentleman in the cap. Thank you. My pleasure. My name is Steve. I live in Deanside. Yep. Ah. I live just off Taylor's Road. Um, I heard one of the candidates earlier speak about using the PTV app. I use the PTV app too. And the first line whenever I want to go somewhere is walk 2.3 kilometres to a bus stop. <laughs> I live in a retirement community. That we are elderly people. A lot of us rely on the public health system. Last week I had an appointment at the Western Hospital. How do you think I got there? Any, any questions? Any ideas? A friend. Taxi. That's right. Shouldn't have had to. No. There's a bus called the 444. It runs from Rockback Railway Station to Aintree, does a circle, 
and is back at Rockbank Station in seven minutes. And that's all it does. We need some sort of service along Taylor's Road. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to hear from the candidates what, what they're proposing to do there with that bus line. Also, I heard the, the Mayor earlier when he spoke, he mentioned various streets which were up for duplication. Didn't mention Taylor's Road. Was that an omission or is there no, something planned there? No, no, that's been brought up. All right, so... Well, the Mayor it wasn't. Okay. Mr Mayor? Uh, yeah, so, so, so the... <coughs> Thank you for your question. Um, and the, the question is, is Taylor's Road? We'll um, start with Bernadette. Go ahead. Uh, thanks for your question. And I can fully understand as a bus user um, just how frustrating it is when you've got to walk further than the bus to get to the bus stop than probably the trip that you're about to take on the bus some days. Um, so what I said before about the fact that we've got um, capacity in our bus network to make it work better for people like you. So we need to actually have a look at all of the bus routes in the Western, not just the Western suburbs, but across the city really, and reconfigure those bus routes so that they do go to places that people are at and to places that people want to go to. Thank you, Luba. Thanks very much. And I know you raised this when I was actually at the retirement village. I have written to Minister Carroll, who's the public transport minister, and raised those concerns. Yet to hear a response, but when I do, I'll make sure that I click it back. So Thanks, Luba. John. Again, I raised the question, how can a retirement village be, be developed without a public transport plan in place to assist that, that village? It's ludicrous that a retirement village can be, can be built with no plan for public transport. Yeah, a lot of people in those villages have mobility issues, so they need that public transport. I agree with you totally that it should be there, and, and I would advocate to get it there sooner than later. And Catherine. Um, thank you for your question. And this, these are questions that I've raised in Parliament with very much cold comfort. Um, and I can give you a response from Ben Carroll, as well as I can give you one from Jala Pulford, and I can give you one from Jacinta Allen. Uh, and they say things like, um, we'll look into it in the way of future network planning, we might do a business case, and this one around, just around buses, it's, it, they, they, the government actually says that they are making it more frequent, but that's not what's happening on the ground. From the complaints that I get from constituents in your immediate area, um, trying to actually get to the station if they've lost their licence um, due to points or what have you. Um, it's almost impossible, almost impossible for the bus service to get to the train and some of them trying to actually ride a bike, they're trying to ride a bike to the train station which just takes almost 40 minutes, it's just ridiculous. Um, for yourself, uh, but <laughs> this, this state government believes that there is an uh, on-call service for constituents in the area. Thanks, Catherine. I'll, 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 I'll move I on now. haven't heard one person do it. Thank you for your, for your question. I've, I'm taking one from a woman over here, then I've got um, a man in the very bright green T-shirt up the back. So a microphone to the, to the woman in grey. Please Thank ask you. your question. Thanks. Um, I'm a small business owner in the city of Melton. I'm also a resident of Ainsbury, which is on the my southern tip of Melton. So each day I have to travel from Ainsbury into the centre of Melton to go to work. I employ quite a number of people in that office as real estate agents. Each day, those real estate agents do a number of appointments around the city of Melton, not the outskirts that we keep building around it and calling it Melton, but the centre of Melton. It takes me 40 minutes to do a 10 minute drive from my home to the centre of the city of Melton. I haven't heard anything about the city of Melton, the centre of Melton, or how the small businesses are supposed to get around town, park, what are you going to do? Thank you for your question. So we'll go straight to Luba. So as the candidate running for the seat of Corroy, that doesn't actually c cover Melton itself, uh, I, I, I don't know that I'm best to actually answer that, but I will say something to the broader scheme of it all. Road congestion is shocking. That's the truth of it. And we do need to do something around here. There's many roads, many of, of my or hopeful to be constituents um, have raised, whether it be Robinson's Road, Taylor's Road, et cetera, et cetera. It's something that needs to occur. Um, we need to wind the congestion. We need to wind the congestion back and it, it needs to properly be advocated for. So, 
sorry, I've got the mic. So what I would be doing if elected is I will categorically be advocating for less road congestion because something does need to be done. Thank you, Luba. John. <coughs> Again, I would work closely with uh, Graham, our candidate in Melton, to have this issue raised and, and resolved. Um, it's an it's issue right across the west. It's not just Corroy, it's not just Melton. Right across the west, whether it be Werribee, whether it be Sunshine, whether it be wherever you go in the west, congestion is a major, major issue. Um, outside my, my, my electorate, understandably, but I would work closely with Graham, uh, our candidate in Melton, to try and come up with a solution for you. Thank you, John. Catherine. Where duplication can occur in the way of doubling of roads, it has to occur. It has to occur here in the Outer West. Um, it, it's a cop-out to actually say that because you're running on a lower house seat, all of these um, uh, candidates are, are part of a team, a bigger team in the way of their major parties. You need to be an expert in a particular area, but all of the roads connect in the West. They all connect. And if you don't understand that they all connect, and no matter if you represent St Albans or you represent Footscray or Altona or Melton or um, uh, Tarnit, they all connect and we all need to use the roads to get from one part of the, of the west to the other for work. Real estate's a great example of doing that. Um, but the duplication needs to occur everywhere. Um, it's great to have a bus, but if you're stuck in congestion because of the one conga line, good luck bus, good luck ambulance, good luck fire truck, good luck uh, police. Thank you, Catherine. Next is Bernadette. Well, one really good way of busting congestion in Melton is to get people out of their cars and build safe, protected bike lanes so that people can ride around Melton. I've, 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 I can't, I've caught the train to, to Melton. Need a um, of some we, can, we can invest in, Greens want to invest in e-bikes so that people can get out of their cars and ride around. It's flat. It's, if it's protected and separated, it's safe for people to use. And Melton is kind of like the perfect um, size for people to ride around, get around town on bikes. Thank you, Bernadette. Um, and we come to our final question. Um, up the back now. Please ask your question now, sir. Hello, my name's John Simons. Um, Bernadette's spoken a lot about active transport, but the other three panel members haven't really mentioned it. I wonder if they have any plans or policies around active transport. Thank you for the question. We'll start with John. And active transport defined as? Walking and cycling. Well, my understanding on uh, e-bikes and e-scooters, etc. first of all, we need to look at the laws. Because currently, as it stands, an e-scooter, if it goes over 10 kilometres an hour, is illegal in Victoria. So we need to look at the laws and before we can say, let's all get on e-scooters that are doing 20 kilometres an hour. Because as it currently stands, if you ride an e-scooter that does 20 kilometres an hour, you will be arrested or charged with unlicensed riding and the scooter will be impounded. So we need to be look at this sensibly and look at that first before we can say, let's all get on an e-scooter. I think it's a great idea, but we need to change the law before we can all get on an e-scooter. Thanks, John. Catherine. You need to make, um, there needs to be roads so that you can actually ride a bike on it. Um, because currently uh, there isn't the opportunity to actually put bike <laughs> lanes because around this particular area, there isn't the opportunity. There needs to be also traffic calming. If you've, I've just driven around Burnside tonight um, to actually see children trying to ride bikes, but there's two cars are going too fast. They're right running around. Uh, I've seen children on motorised motorbikes, like their bike has got a little motor on it. Because of the distance around here um, and trying to actually get to a shopping centre, uh, it, it's nice to have this idealistic attitude that you can jump on a bike safely, but the cars need to be, there needs to be traffic calming in the area. Um, you need to have all of those pieces of infrastructure in place because currently it's really unsafe for a lot of bike users, and especially children, they need to be off-road. Thank you, Catherine. Bernadette. 
Um, thanks for your question. Yeah, we haven't talked much about active transport, but it absolutely 100% needs to be in the transport mix. For particularly for um, uh, travel, say less than five kilometres, walking and riding a bike are like the perfect way to do that if you're able. Um, so we we need we do need to hear more from our government from from anyone who I guess is standing in an election about how they're going to bring in some better walking paths and better safe, protected and separated bike lanes so that people who do, we know not everybody wants to ride a bike or walk and not everybody can, but for the significant number of people who, significant numbers of people who do, we do actually need to be catering for them as well. Thank you, Bernadette. Luba. Thanks very much. Thank you for the question. Look, I think it's a no-brainer. Obviously, active transport reduces traffic congestion and also carbon emissions. So I think the more we can walk and use bikes, we should. Thank you, Libya. That's all the time we have for questions. Okay. We now move to the, the phase of the evening where the candidates get to oh, no, sum up. Be surprised. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't have any time for any more questions. So. Oh, we're out of time, I'm sorry. No, yeah. we're out of time. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry, but we're, we're going to allow two minutes now from each of the panellists um, in reverse order from the original card draw. So that the person with the four of hearts gets to go first, then three of hearts, two of hearts and ace of hearts. Bernadette Thomas holds the four of hearts and therefore you have the first speaking position. You have two minutes. Do I need to hand my card? Oh, yeah, actually, you, oh, yeah, you, 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 you can remain at the table. I think it's probably easier. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So thanks everyone for those great questions and for putting us on the spot um, a little bit. You know, it's really great that everybody's so invested in um, improving transport across not just the Corroy um, electorate but sort of across the western suburbs. So we know that people right across the west want clean, cheap, low carbon transport options. But right now, for many, there's no choice. And where there is choice, as Iqbal, Sakia and others um, have shown tonight, the net networks don't work for them, they're infrequent, they don't connect or they're too crowded to use and we're forcing people into cars on congested roads and wasting their time sitting in traffic. So the Greens have committed to developing a clean transport plan and putting infrastructure and services where they're needed, not where it's politically expedient. We want to invest in transport infrastructure that keeps up with and is ahead of population growth and reduces pollution. We want to shift thousands more people by public transport, especially commuters who live and travel within the Western region. We want to invest significantly in active transport to get more people moving on foot or by bike. And we want to reduce congestion and pollution in the West and improve the livability of our growing suburbs into the future. The most important part of this work will be talking to you, the community, listening to your stories and asking you to help create the solutions that meet your needs. And with more Greens in Parliament, we can push the next government to cut transport emissions, make electric vehicles more affordable, massively boost public transport services and get more people walking and riding their bikes and making our transport system work for us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much. Oh, number three? Yep, you, you got the card. Go ahead, Luba. Thank you. Thank you very much for the questions today and for the respect that everybody showed each other. Very much appreciated. So the reality is frequent transport is good transport and I think we all know that. It connects people to education, it aids access to jobs and in a nutshell it helps people achieve their dreams. What could be better than people being able to take a bus, not having to walk 2.3 kilometres, to a frequent train at their local station and moving faster thanks to the removed level crossings. Nothing would make me prouder than to say that all of that infrastructure and service was delivered by a third term Andrews Labor government. And if elected as the member of Cororoit, I will be advocating for the best public transport possible that we have here in the West. Thank you. Next is Catherine, go ahead. I, tr I truly believe that um, the residents of the West need to vote for independence, your local, in, um, local independence, that know your local area, that will actually understand your local needs and wants and be able to represent you hand on heart, you rather than a party. I set up my little independence party as a vehicle to help local independence to run for state. 
I would encourage people here to vote for local independents in your area, but know your local needs. We have been ignored far too long here in the West. I have lived here all my life. And without a change of government, you need a better government. Otherwise, you're going to continue to get empty promises. I will look into this, a business case possibly in the future. Yep. So it is your choice in November 26th. I would think seriously about how you may change your vote this time round to actually get a better uh, transport infrastructure in your area um, rather than a heap of empty promises. I focus on one solution when there's multiple solutions, multiple solutions, uh, and that we actually need to prioritise the choke points, the duplication, making sure that people can actually get around. Thank you. And finally, John, go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time tonight. I appreciate you coming out. As a local resident who lives in Taylor's Road, uh, Taylor's Hill, just off Taylor's Road, I'm in this congestion every day. I'm a sales rep, so I know I feel your pain get going around. I have to make appointments in our blocks, even if it's a 10-minute appointment, because I have to allow for the traffic. I've sat on Westwood Drive for 25 minutes to go from Taylor's Road to Ballarat Road. 25 minutes for less than two kilometres. It's, it's an issue that is huge. I will be a strong voice to advocate to get these roads duplicated. I'll be an advocate for you to get this congestion fixed. It's been neglected out here to us for far too long, and I want to see a better network here in, in, the, in the West. I want to see our aged residents looked after better than just, say, plonking a village in the middle of nowhere and giving them no transport. It is wrong. It is morally wrong. We need this fixed and we need it fixed sooner than later. So thank you for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you to all of our panellists. And on behalf of the MTF and Melton Council, I'd like to thank all of those who work behind the scenes to make this event uh, a success. Pauline Hobbs, Karen Lee, the two concierges, Fergus Vile and Georgina Borg. Um, please thank them for their efforts. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed myself a lot. But I'd, I'd also like to thank our host, um, the, the Mayor Councillor Goran Kesic, the Deputy Mayor Councillor Lara Kali, the Assembled Mayors Councillor Sophie Ramsey, um, Councillor Ashley Vandenberg, and I'd like to make special mention of the Mayor of Wyndham. Councillor Peter Maynard, who wanted to ask a question, <laughs> but I ran out of time, so I'm, I'm very sorry, Peter, but I'll, um, I'll introduce you to the candidates later and we can, we, we can ask you that question. Um, thank you to the, the City of Melton. They've asked me to uh, mention a campaign calling for all parties and candidates to commit to a local major arterial road project in the lead-up to the state election. There is a booth at the back of the hall um, in in order for you to sign up to the campaign. If you're interested, you can go and talk to Georgina and Fergus later about that. And additionally, they're inviting anyone who is interested in getting active in the transport space, if you're interested in this, and everyone in the, in the room is, to consider joining the City of Melton Transport Reference Group. It'll be a way you can directly influence policy making and the consideration of all of those questions that have arisen this evening. It'd be a great way to turn your obvious interest in transport issues into a positive force for government, action representing the broader community. And we've heard from people from all over the city of Melton, from Thornhill Park, North Stone Estate, Deanside, and Mount Atkinson, um, Taylor's Hill. I'd like to thank you, the audience, for, for being here tonight, and everyone watching online and on YouTube. Thank you for your obvious interest in, in your community, your passion for transport. I'd like to thank all the candidates and people agitating in the audience for a stronger and better connected city of Melton. Thank you and a good night.